right. So let me show you a very quick way in which you can chat with your own data using Python. So this is the little tool that I'm going to show you. Gives you a glimpse of how most applications that have AI involved in them work. So what you're basically doing is you are calling OpenAI's API and you're accessing a model, you're passing data to the model, the model is doing something with it and you get an output. So that's probably the most basic way in which you can use OpenAI's API. And then you have some other more complex AI integrated applications that can be broken down and simply are just many open AI API calls just stacked together, right? So nowadays it's not very difficult to develop an application when you have access to such a powerful API that can do all the heavy lifting for you. So yeah, let, let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to briefly go through how this tool works. Lucky day for you. This is only 72 lines of code. So that means that the changes that you have to do to suit the code for yourself are minimal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a text file and I'm going to copy the information that I want to talk to. So here I have my very boring Twitter profile with some mainstream posts. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to paste that, save, I'm going to press run. This is going to pop up. And now I will ask it to summarize the tweets and give me the trending topics. So let's see what it does. So the tweets are mainly about various topics such as keyboard shortcuts, money, sleep, James Bond and political events. So maybe I want to summarize the tweets from Andrew Tate in bullet point format. There you go. So Andrew Tate tweeted multiple times on February the 7th. His tweets were mostly random and did not seem to have a specific theme. Um, he also retweeted a tweet from someone else about money not being able to buy something. Um, I can't say the third one, but yeah, so his tweets were a mix of self-promotion and random thoughts. So hopefully you can see the use cases that this can have. And I'm talking about outside of this basic tool, right? And this comes back to what I was saying at the start, where many of the applications that you see out there that involve AI are ChatGPT wrappers. So you see how easy it was for me to just make a basic UI and uh, connect it to the ChatGPT API in the background and for it working very nicely. So there you go. So now what I've done is that I went to the text document and I removed all the stuff that I had before. And now I have information about my CV. Uh, I fed it a really long document on my experience. And right, so you can ask it now, what did I work in? in 2019 and you can see and let's say I'm looking at a vlog and it's super long uh, I can just copy this and then I can delete that I save it and then I can open it again and just say summarize the blog post because I don't want to read. And then there you go. And maybe I want it in bullet points because I'm very lazy. So let's do that. And there you go. So hopefully with this little demo that I just gave you, 
you are able to understand the potential use cases and having a tool like this in someone's workflow, right? The possibilities are nearly endless. I'm not talking only about this specific use case, but there's so many different use cases, right? And there's going to be so many that are going to be made in this year. So it's important for you to understand where can you capitalize on this potential as well? Because, you know, you, you've seen how easy it was to, to make this. It just was 72 lines of code and some little, little coding knowledge that you can learn on Udemy pretty quickly. Think about the legal industry, right? Maybe you want to summarize uh, some legal files, legal documents. Maybe you want to go into the financial industry and summarize the vast amounts of data that you have with a language model and then generate some useful insights, get that information into the language model, let it do all the hard labor, and then it will output a really beautiful dashboard. So this is where we are going towards in the following years. The great thing is that we are not there yet. We're not in a point where this has been fully settled down. There's still a lot of room for growth. So if you've seen this video, I hope that I opened your eyes a little bit to the possible use cases that this can have. So let's set this up. So you would first go to your constants file where your API key resides. I put it separately instead of putting it on the main code for privacy and security. So you would get your API key from your OpenAI account. So you create it and then make sure you put this somewhere safe, copy it, and then you are going to paste it in between the quotation marks, okay? And then every time that you write down something in Visual Studio, make sure to press Command or Control S to save it, to save the changes. Then you let's come back here and let's go through the general aspects of the code. So you have a general understanding of what's going on. So what you're doing here is importing all the libraries that contain all the necessary methods, functions, objects, classes, that you need in order to run the following code properly. So once you have these installed, so the way you can install these libraries is to go here, copy this. You're gonna use the package installer. Basically, you're gonna paste this in the, to the terminal, press enter. It's going to install all the dependencies that you need. And after you have everything set up properly, you should be able to run the code. Let's get to this class. So this basically instructs how the UI is going to look. So no need to get too deep into this. If you want to change the name. So, you know, whenever you see this, right? And this button here, you can change that, right? The title, and then you can change the button as well. But yeah, that's not the main thing. I just added that on top to make it look nice, but the main part of the code is here. So this is what's going to perform that search over the document. So what's gonna happen is that the file is going to be loaded from this directory. Make sure you change this part of the directory to wherever you have downloaded this file, right? So I'm gonna load that file, ideally, and the text straight away into here, as I did before in the demo. Then it's going to split the text. This is a common thing that Langchain does in order to process the information easier. So what it does is that it splits the loaded text into smaller chunks. It's like breaking a large book into chapters for you to navigate easier through them. Then the next important part is the embeddings. So Langchain uses advanced language models provided by OpenAI to understand uh, the context and the meaning of the text. Think of it as Langchain trying to understand the language like a human would. And then you have Chroma. This component organizes the text data into a searchable format. It's similar, I would say, to indexing a book, which makes it easier to find specific information quicker. Think about it that way. And then we have Retrieval QA which is a uh, Langchain's retrieval question answering system. Uh, 
So the system is going to search through the text data that we indexed to uh, find relevant answers to the query that we put in the UI. It's like asking a librarian to find the information for you. Think about it that way. I think it's better to show you in a diagram how this works because we all love diagrams. We all love images. It's easier to understand it that way. So you're loading the file. In this case, it only accepts text files, but we're going to get that large text file. And in order for it to make it easier to process, we're going to split that large file into five smaller chunks. Those smaller chunks will be converted into a language that the computer can understand. In this case, they are vectors. That's how we store the data efficiently. A vector is basically a representation of that word in 3D space, right? So X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. So that word or that character is going to be represented as a point in 3D space. So when you pass in a query, all those characters are going to be plotted in a 3D graph. What's going to happen is that the lang chain framework is going to look into the text that you stored, basically just trying to match any patterns that it sees between your query in that 3D graph to the information that you stored, which is also represented as a 3D graph right? Trying to match all the similarities between them. And so when Langchain finds the biggest similarity between the information that it has retrieved and the query, it's going to get that query. It's going to only parts of the information that is relevant, that it has stored. And then this will be pushed into the language model and processed to give you an answer that a human can understand. And yeah, if you want any other details about this, well, you have the documentation for you to go through. So yeah, that is the end of this video. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video, since it would help me understand if you like these kinds of videos or not. And yeah, I do understand as well that it is not an easy concept to describe. So roast me in the comments. Let me know what you like about the video let me know what you don't like about the video because that is as equally important to me and i will be posting consistently here my goal is to start posting at least once a week hopefully i can achieve that with all the stuff that i have going on on the side but yeah thank you for watching and see you in the next one